I know you should be delighted to be here because there were other places we could have been and other places we could not have been. Um, this morning, we want you to feel much better when you leave here than when you came. After the choir sing, the prayers are made, the scriptures are read, we will hear a good sermon. So I know God's going to bless you, but we're going to really, really feel good to leave to serve the Lord for the rest of the week. So we are asking you to help the choir, help with the prayer, saying your amen, or yes, Lord, or whatever, because we're going to have a good time today. Amen. All right, so when our choir lift is up with this election, and after that, we'll have the hymn of praise to be found on page 351, that's not O gentle Savior. So go ahead, choir, lift us up. There are some things I may not know. Yes. There are some places that I
God is real. We know He is real. We know He is real. As if not, you don't want the Lord to pass you by. Amen. That day come, you want to go to Him. Amen. So let us live like we don't want Him to pass us by. Amen. At this time, we will have our scripture reading by Ms. They serve at the preacher person. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Jesus helps a non-Jewish woman. Jesus left the place and went to the area around Tyre. He went into the house and did not want anyone to know he was there. But Jesus could not stay hidden. A woman heard that he was there. Her little daughter had an evil spirit in her. So the woman came to Jesus and fell at his feet. She was not Jewish. She was Greek, born in Phanea, in Syria. She begged Jesus to force the demon out of her daughter. Mm. Jesus told the woman, it is not right to take the children's bread and <clears throat> give it to the dog. First, let the children eat all they want. Mm. She answered, this is true. Lord, but the dogs under the table can eat the pieces of food that the children don't eat. Is that correct? Then Jesus said, that is very good. You have answered well. You may go. The demon has left your daughter. The woman went home and found her daughter lying in bed. The demon was gone. Jesus heals a deaf man. Then Jesus left the area around Tariq. Mm -hmm. He went through Sidon mm -hmm. to Lake Galilee, to the area of the Ten Towns. While he was there, some people brought a man to him. Mm -hmm. This man was deaf and could not talk. Jesus. The people begged Jesus to put his hands on the man to mm -hmm. heal him. Jesus led the man away from the crowd to be alone with him. Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Mm. Then Jesus spat and touched the man's tongue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus looked up to heaven and took a deep breath. He said to the man, F for a day. This means be open. Yes, Lord. When Jesus did this, the man was able to hear. Yes. He was able to use his tongue and he spoke clearly. Mm -hmm. Jesus commanded the people not to tell anyone about what happened. But the more he commanded them, the more they told about it. Mm -hmm. They were really amazed. They said, Jesus does everything mm -hmm. well. well. He makes the deaf hear and those who can't talk, Jesus makes them able to speak. Wow. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. To 
understand that if you don't have your act together, it's time now. It's time now, Brother Michael and Andre, pray for them. Especially Andre, I understand him. He's been there for his mother time after time after time. He's taken that kind of heart. So let's just pray for the family. Yes. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy. be our prayer. Be our prayer. Let me have this. Say it together, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Be our friend. Upon 
the Friendship Church family at large because we are doing the best we can in trying to get back into our sanctuary. Please, Lord, have mercy on us and help us so that we can do what is pleasing and what is right in your sight so that soon and very soon we will be able to go back into our sanctuary and praise your name like we never praised it before. And if you do this for us, Lord, we'll be so careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise that you so deserve. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks.
a good thing.
That's for sure. It really is. Sister Priscilla kept saying, she's going to keep right on. She 
said that to me a couple of weeks ago. Rev, good days and bad days. I said, there's little all of us go through. So don't single yourself out. Because God is an awesome God. Yes, 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 He is. Let's pray. Lord, sometimes when it seems like we aren't going to make it, you know exactly when to show up. Sometimes we feel a little down. Sometimes we feel like all hope is lost. But that's when you show up. Father God, we thank you for the blessings seen, the blessings unseen. We thank you, dear God, that you're allowing us to keep our minds together. Because if truth be told, if Satan had his way, we would lose our minds. So, Father God, I'm humbly asking now if you would just touch me in a way that you would be pleased, not me, Lord, because I have no say in the matter. Lord, you know what needs to be said and done. So we pray now that it will be done. This we ask in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. I was sitting in the hospital room while ago and I was just kind of contemplating where where should I go? Where, what should I say? And so God started looking in the book of Habakkuk. Yes. Even though I get into that they can't pronounce the name. Habakkuk. Okay. Let's go to Habakkuk. Okay. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk right after the book of uh, what Nathan. N-A-H-U-M, Let's go to the book of Habakkuk. We're going to look at the first chapter. And, and so many times questions are asked, well, who wrote that book? Habakkuk wrote it. He wrote it. And we're going to Read the first 11 verses of the first chapter of Habakkuk. If you're there, say amen. Amen. Did I ask y'all how y'all feeling today? Did I ask you? Yes. What did y'all tell me? Y'all feeling okay? How am I feeling? Oh, great bless your heart. That's doing good. Tired, tired, but see, I, I, I try to be transparent. You can't act like you're Superman or Superwoman and you ain't. If you're tired, say you're tired. If you're sad, say you're sad. If you're happy, say you're happy. God knows. He already knows. He tries to put a front. Habakkuk, the first chapter, the first 11 verses. I'm reading from one of my favorite translations, the New Living. And, and the first 11 verses, actually, yeah, the first 11 verses. Habakkuk is, is, is complaining to God. God responded. It reads, this is the message that the prophet Habakkuk received in a vision. How long, O Lord, must I call for help? And as we read this, please think about your own person. How long, O Lord, do, must I call for help? But you do not listen. 
Violence is everywhere, I pray. But you do not come to save. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Where must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction. I see violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. We can stop that. Huh? The law has become paralyzed. And there is no justice in the courts. We could stop right there. The wicked far outnumber the righteous. So that justice, Lord have mercy, has become perverted. Listen to God now. The Lord replied, Look around at the nations. Look and be amazed. For I am doing something in your own day. Something you would not believe. Even if someone told you about it. Oh, God said, I am raising up the Babylonians. Because they are cruel and violent people. They will march across the world and conquer the other lands. They are notorious for their cruelty. And they do whatever they like. Their horses are swifter than cheetahs. And fiercer than wolves at dusk. The charioteers charge from far away. Like eagles, they swoop down to devour their prey. On they come, all bent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind, sweeping captives ahead of them like sand. They scoff at kings and princes and scorn all their fortresses. They simply pile ramps of earth against their walls and capture them. The last verse. They sweep past like the wind and they're gone. But they are deeply guilty for their own strength is their small G-O-D. For their own strength is their small G-O-D. The word of God for the people of God. We like to say who, what, when, and where. Don't we? But the question this morning is one that Habakkuk was seeking. The question, one word, why? Why? You see, Habakkuk wrote this book because he wanted to show that, that God is still in control of the world. Amen. Despite the apparent triumph of evil. He wanted to, 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 to understand because Habakkuk was, was kind of like that prophet who, who said, I'm doing all I can do. But still it doesn't seem to be working out. Why are the people so evil? Why, as you heard in the scriptures, why do they always want to argue and fight? It's simply because they are not of God. And, and you see, it goes all the way back to when, when the children Israel was so combative. They 
were so rebellious. They didn't want to hear anything the prophets had to say, much less Habakkuk. He said, Lord, Lord, I, I, I don't understand why is there so much evil in this world. And as I look around, y'all, this particular week, I don't know what's going to happen, but I am so sick and tired of these school shootings. Every time you turn around, some, some, some idiotic person will take a gun to the schoolhouse to just Rain the terror over innocent people. Yes, Children who are there trying to learn. Yes. Teachers who are there who are trying to teach. And yet you have a deranged person. That's why, that's why, that's why 2 Chronicles 7 14 is so important. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, turn from the wicked ways, seek my face, then I'll hear from them. I will forgive the sins. I will heal the land. My brothers and sisters, I don't want to hear nobody say it's time for us to get back to prayer. You should have been praying all along. You should be so deep in your prayer life that nothing and nobody can shake you away from it. You should be so deep in your prayer life that all you think about is pleasing God and doing whatever he tells you to do. Why? Why? Why must we see all of this destruction? It goes on. Corrupt 
isn't the human being every time you turn around to do something here is sin to divert you away from what God wants you to do. Why? Why? And the other reason why bad things happen to good people is because God wants you to understand that every day you live on this side of eternity, you're going to be faced with all kinds of atrocities. You're going to be faced with some ups and downs and football lie on it, all kinds of crazy things is going to go on. And so God is saying, why? Because I am teaching you to be strong in adversity. You will never back up. All the Bible says, Roman Paul says, and all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose, not your purpose, not my purpose, not your purpose, but for his purpose. His purpose. And now uh, Paul said something else that I love. He said, if God is for us, Lord have mercy. If God is for us, who in the world can be against us? Can you remember that? I didn't hear everybody talk to me. I said, can you remember that? If God is what? For us? Who can be against us? Why? Why? We encounter all kinds of bad stuff. Jesus. God says, I'm prepping you for down the road. Amen. When you get to it, you can identify it and you can deal with it according to the power of the Holy Spirit. Because God will make sure you get through it if, number one, you are a believer. Number two, if you trust and have faith in him, he'll get you through it. He, God doesn't need these, these some tiny Christians. He already know you full of flesh. He already know you will mess up. But what he's waiting on you to do is admit it. Fall on your prostrate knees and say, Father, I know I have come up short of the glory, but you see, Paul says, every last one of us in here have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So what are you going to do? Why? Why do I become so gullible when it comes to Satan? Because he knows how to make you smile. But it's only temporary. Am I right about it? Yeah. yeah. If God is for us, who can be against us? And when I think about the topic, one word, why? Lord, why? forgot. I am the creator. You just the creation. Don't you ever forget that. And I think about even Jesus before I sit down. Jesus said why must I go through this at the cross? And he said Father not my will but let thy will be done. That was a why. Why do I have to go and string out on this cross right here? Why do I have to be pierced in my arms and my legs? Why? Because I'm coming so that you and you and you and you and me might have another right to the tree of life. Why? 
Because I love you just that much. Amen. Why? Because you need to understand the rough roads ahead. Yes. Because Dr. King said there are going to be some difficult days ahead. Yes. He said, well, I ain't worried that I've been to the mountain. Yes. Lord have mercy. Yes. So my friends, my family here at Friendship, every now and then, let that bird cross your spirit. Why am I about to do this? And you think back on where God has brought you from. And the most important part is, he is not finished with you. But now it comes at a price. The price is humbling yourself and doing what he's called you to do. I'm done. I'm going to sit down.
the question. And I really want to know this. How many of you are really serious about your spiritual journey? You can raise your hand if you want to. Oh, yes, Lord. I mean, really serious about your spiritual journey. Yes, Lord. Sitting in the hospital room there and looking at Miss Diane after she had transitioned. But that was the word initially, that she was already gone. Jesus. But let me, let me give you an instance of when God will show up. Even though she transitioned, but there was a period in there, the nurse came and told the family, I found a pulse. Remember now, already supposed to be gone but I found a pulse sometimes in our lives we feel like we gone and I'm not necessarily talking about death I'm, I'm, I'm gone the things that I had aspirations to do gone my education, I wanted to obtain it, gone. My marriage, gone. Jesus. My connection with my siblings that we've been fighting all these long years, gone. But then all of a sudden, here comes that pulse. It ain't gone. It ain't gone. It's still there. Father, in the precious and the matchless name of Jesus, Lord, help us to regain that pulse. Help us to recognize that when all seems lost, yes. when we sometimes can't seem to find our way, let the vein in our arms and our heart and our minds start to pump again so we can feel that pulse. Lord, we are so thankful we are so grateful because you have been better than better to us. You made a way when there was no way. You have allowed families to reunite. You have allowed marriages to get better. You have allowed brothers and sisters to start talking again. Yes. And for that we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, one of your servants earlier prayed for the well-being of our church. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I know you're working. So, Father God, those who may be a little bit impatient like I used to be, help us to grow the seed of patience. And so, Lord, when you help us to grow and plant first, but grow that seed of patience, before we know it, it'll all be over. Bless these, thy servants. Bless our children, yes. our youth who have to travel to school in the dark sometimes yes, to make sure they catch that bus. Yes. 
But Lord, I need you to go ahead of them. I need you to send the powerful angels. I need you to send Gabriel. I need you to send Michael. I need you to send all the other angels that you have dispatched from the courtroom. Send them out to the school. Keep our children safe. Lord, I pray that you will allow Friendship United Methodist Church to once again regain that beacon of light so that they may be able to show others the right way. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. We worship you in spirit and in truth. In the precious and the matchless name of Jesus. Let every heart say amen. 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 Please clap for him if you love him. Please clap for him. It's hard to find those folk. And the discipline says three years of service and you have to rotate off. But I did not do that my first year because I didn't know anybody that much. But it's coming to that time that, that we have to adhere to what the discipline is saying. But I'm going to tell you this. I'll be meeting with the nominations on Tuesday night. And we're going to have to do what we have to do. It doesn't say that we have to have a name there. But we won't try our best because of the size of this church. My point to all of that is, if you are serving, then please attend your meetings, if at all possible. If you have suggested to the vice chair of nominations that you would like to serve for the new conference year, please show up. There's some people that have submitted their names and I haven't seen them in church. You can't effectively lead people if you aren't there. Amen. This is serious now, so I need you to please adhere to what I'm asking. Are you all on the same page I am? You on the same page? Yeah. Raise your hand if you're on the same page. Yeah. We want you to be able to serve, but don't just give your name to the vice chair and you don't let them show up. 
And it's bad when we have to reach back to people who have been serving longer than what the discipline said. So sometimes we don't have a choice, but we're going to do our best. We're going to come together with this, right? Oh boy, that's good more. We're going to come together with this, right? Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for being so attentive and allowing me to be a little tardy this morning, but I it, was, it was absolutely necessary. And I'll be at the hospital. Don't do anything. I think Sister Elaine, who is Brother Fred McRae's. Elaine? She's the wife of Brother Fred, right? Yes. Yeah. She and I spoke before we left the hospital. That she'll be in charge of putting things together because she understands where we have to go and what we have to do. And she'll be in touch with me. Amen. Amen. In all hearts and minds of fear. I got to thank my acolytes coming to have lunch with y'all soon, okay? Can I do that? Y'all let me do that? That's Why y'all right. say no? No. Can, can I come and have lunch? Well, let me just say, the principal told me I can come and have lunch with my children anytime I want. That's, right. That's what the principal told me. Now. Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry.
we will take these things to our district annual meeting that we will then take to our state annual meeting, our conference annual meeting that will be held in Rock Hill. And if you're going to Rock Hill, the registration, early registration is by the 30th of this month, must be postmarked by the 30th of this month. Any woman um, that is attending the district, the state annual meeting in Rock Hill, October 25th and 26th, or 24th and 25th, I'm not sure of the date, we ask that you please send in your registration. If you do not have a registration form, let me know. We will be collecting school supplies and cleaning supplies for uh, those individuals who are in less fortunate situations than us. We ask that you please bring them out starting next Sunday so that we may take them with us to the designated area. Also, Williamsburg County Veteran Office will have its Veterans Ball on Saturday, September 14th. Cocktail hour will begin at 5.30 p.m. Formal dinner, 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. Veterans and service members, the cost is $45. Civilians, $50. You may purchase your tickets at the Williamsburg County Veteran Affairs Office that is located at 147 West Main Street or on Eventbrite. Formal attire is required. If you are a veteran, you can wear your dress blues uh, or a tux, and anyone else, you can ask for formal attire. Now, for our PSA, let me fill you in just a little bit. On Wednesday, the Democratic uh, Committee had a headquarters meeting, and just to give you a, a recap of what took place at that meeting, we now have a headquarters. Hours of operation will be from 2 p.m. until 6 p.m., Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, and they're asking all interested citizens, elected officials, and candidates to commit to being responsible for one week of headquarters operation. Some of the duties that will be, that's asked of you if you're working at the headquarters include signing up volunteers, selling campaign items, distributing candidate information, organizing phone banking, in campus and areas and documenting citizens' concerns. There are three weeks committed to in October. The week of October 7th, the Neesmith branch of the NAACP will be the headquarters captain. The Neesmith branch of the NAACP will be the headquarters captain for the Democratic Party on October 7th, that means all of us who are here in this church that are members of the Neeson branch of the NAACP and any other person who would like to volunteer, you can volunteer at any time, but we're asking that you please support when the Neeson branch of the NAACP will man the headquarters. Now there are three phases. I'm gonna share phase one with you. That will begin Monday, September 9th, which is tomorrow, until October 4th. Part one, phone banking for 3,800 infrequent voters in Williamsburg County. They need volunteers to pledge to call 100 voters per person. 21 volunteers already signed up. A good bit from this church, because I was there. And we signed up and a few signed up who was not there, like Mildred Cunningham. She will be calling individuals. <laughs> and Lauren Burgess. We're looking for 17 more. This is an effort to verify their voter registration status and get them back on the voter rolls if they have been purged. Phase part two of phase one. Voter registration until Saturday, October 4th. Part three of phrase one, educate citizens about absentee voting. Last day to request an absentee ballot is Tuesday, October 25th. Now, we need your help. We need your support. 
There is literature on the table when you exit the fellowship hall. Feel free to take one. Oh, this is a QR code. You can take this QR code and you can sign, sign in, use it to sign in to check your voter's registration status or to sign up um, or to register to vote. The next thing, I want you to remember, if you have not voted in the last two elections, Amen. you may have been purged from the roll. Use the QR code to check to see if you've been purged from the roll. If you have, you can then reactivate your voter's registration status. If you do not know how to do that, that is not a problem. LaQuandra, or I, or anyone who knows how to work with a QR code, we will be happy to help you. Also, if you want to be a part of the phone bank, you do not have to use your own phone number. You don't have to, not, we will get you a Google number. All you need is a Gmail. If you do not have a Gmail, guess what? LaQuandra and I will get you a Gmail. And we will get you a Google number. I'm already have a list of individuals that I'll give their Google number to them. Guess what else? If you don't want to do that, that is okay. I'm going to give you another sheet. And on this sheet, this is people, these are people that you know. These are friends that you talk to all the time, family members. You write their names down and you say, well, I think they may vote, I think they may not, but I'm going to have a conversation with them. And then, with just the people you talk to, make sure they understand the importance of voting. And if they haven't voted in a while, get them in contact with TCRI so we can help them re reactivate their voting status. It is imperative that we vote. Your life depends on it. If your child is will be 17 before November 5th, they may register to vote. There, we have some important dates. Early voting begins October 21st, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I have so many pieces of paper up here. But I, I memory serves me correctly. Early voting will begin Monday, October 21st, and go through Saturday, November 2nd. Now, election day is November 5th. Last day to register to vote is October 4th. The last day to request an absentee ballot is October 25th. Your vote matters. There's information out there with all these dates on it. You will get a PSA not this long, on every Sunday, just to remind you to vote. The different ones of us will be coming in front of you to ask you to vote and to get the word out. Talk to your family and your friends, near and far. Voting matters. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, our spiritual health tip for today. The church is described in the Bible as a body, not a business. The business of the church is to win souls for Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, if there are any persons visiting with us, and if it is your desire, you may stand, give us your name and church affiliation. They are not guests, but I do see Dale Neesmith and his beautiful mama, Doretha Neesmith. We are so glad that she is here with us today. Amen. Amen. I see Sylvia and her husband with us. Mr. Wilson, is it? Yes. Okay. We're so glad to have you all with us today. They are uh, the brother and uh, sister of Booty. <laughs> and we're glad to have all of you here today. In fact, I think this ends your morning announcement. Again, we have heard that. Oh, we'll do them all. I'll do that. Um, thank you. We ask that you please keep the Harper family in prayer. Miss Diane was the sister of Elaine McCray and Mr. James E. Smith that, that sits right over here every Sunday. So we're going to ask that you please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. The friendship mantra at this time, please. 
Friendship United Methodist Church, the friendship has a new meaning. Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest we share is love. Remember, do something. Vote. We won't get to all of those 19 verses in the first setting, but we're using the same is that format, S-O-A-P, SOAP, Scripture, O, S is Scripture, O is Observation, A is Application, and P is Prayer. Jeremiah, first chapter 1 through 19, 1 through 19. So please, look forward to seeing you. And we will be meeting here for the foreseeable future, hopefully, uh, no longer than maybe probably the month of October. And we'll be gone. Jeremiah, the first chapter, verse 1 through 19. We won't get through all of those. We'll do it in segments. I'll present the first segment on Wednesday night. Okay? Please come and let's discuss the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Once again, we want to thank our IT ministry, media ministry, our ushers, acolytes, musicians, our liturgists, those who pray for us, the scripture, we thank you for all that you have done. Would you please stand? Acolytes, please come.
to the only God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Be glory, majesty, and love. It's now and forevermore. Please let us join together as we sing the threefold. Amen.